And we're rolling. Let's clean out this lens here. It's always good to take care of your lenses here. And that's what we're talking about today. Today we are talking about my very first fully rehoused vintage cinema lens. Now usually I'm talking about my Canon FD lenses, you know, my old vintage lenses that I have converted to EF, I've put follow focus gears on them and different um, step up rings in the front so I can just put the same size filter on all my lenses. Basically taking these old vintage lenses and making them work in a cinema, video, film environment. Well today we're talking about the uh, rehoused Helios 44-2. Kind of a confusing name, a Helios is an old Russian vintage lens. It was a very common lens. I mean, a lot of people like to use this lens because it has a really, it has like this really fun swirly bokeh, which really gives us a like nice vintage look. And is just very different and unique compared to other lenses. It's a pretty common lens. I think they're like $50 on eBay. A lot of people like to use this lens for cinema. But today we're talking about the Helios 44-2 from Vintage Lenses for Video. They teamed up with Iron Glass Adapters to rehouse that lens. Now the reason I said it's a confusing name before is because it's called a 44-2, even though it's a 58 millimeter F2 aperture. I'm sure there's a reason for the numbering system, but I don't really understand it. But today we're talking about the 58 millimeter F2 Helios lens. Now, a vintage lens for video asked me if I wanted to try out this lens, and I, I obviously said yes because it's one thing to you know be able to shoot on vintage lenses and to convert them, but you know converting them isn't going to make them the perfect lens for cinema. You're not going to have all the nice features that you would have from an actual cinema lens, um, you know, with a really nice long focus throw like this one, the proper gearing on it, and also the oversized lens. You know, it seems silly. The actual Helios 44 is really just a small lens. It's I think it's probably even smaller than this little 35, around the same size as this 35 millimeter here. Um, but the reason that you build out a lens like this and make it this large is for a couple reasons. Um, obviously, it really helps make that focus throw longer. And so you have a much longer focus throw when you're pulling focus, which means you can be more accurate with your focus and you can't miss focus as much when using a proper follow focus or an electronic wireless follow focus. And it has the standard uh, gears on there and everything's made out of metal. So it's a really nice construction. The other reason that these lenses are so big is because you know you wanna have a standard size lens to work with standard cinema matte boxes and filters. So even though the actual lens element itself is very tiny in here, this outer edge here is a 95 millimeter outer diameter, which is one of the standard common sizes for matte boxes. And what's great about this too, is that with, with the size like this, if you bought another cinema lens, it would also be larger. And this kind of standardizes all the lenses. And so when you go to mount a follow focus on them, it's gonna be um, a quicker and easier thing to do. So right now I'm using the Nucleus Nano um, with my kit um, and it's a little bit harder to mount Nucleus Nano on a lens this small because the Nano is only you know this long so it kind of struggles to reach lenses but when the, the bigger the lens is the easier it is for the follow focus to reach it and probably the more leverage you'll be able to have um, with a follow focus as well so that I'm sure there's other reasons from an engineering standpoint that these lenses have to be bigger, um, but it's something that I actually like. Uh, obviously, I also like a smaller lens um, just for the lightweight and ease of use, but I'm excited to have both of these style of lenses in my kit. Now, I've talked a lot on the channel before about my Canon FD 55 millimeter, and I really, really like that lens. That's an F1.2 lens, so it didn't necessarily make sense to get another lens in this kind of same focal range. But I did do something a little bit differently with this one. So first off, this is going to have a little bit of a different bokeh characteristic. Um, and then also what I did is I asked uh, Iron Glass Adapters if they could put in the anamorphic bokeh mod on this lens. So what they do basically is at the very back of the lens behind the aperture, they actually put in an oval shaped uh, bokeh modifier. And so that's gonna make your bokeh, you know, the circular bits in the image when they're out of focus, r rather than looking like circles, they are going to look uh, more oval like anamorphic bokeh. And this just adds a little bit of a unique characteristic to the bokeh, something that kind of, you know, switches things up and makes it different than my other lenses. And I thought that'd be really fun to do. And speaking of aperture and bokeh, this lens actually has quite a few uh, iris blades in it. So the bokeh is already really nice and circular to begin with throughout the entire um, aperture range. 
that's something that's really nice just buying this lens to begin with but then if you add that bokeh mod in there you just have a big range of really nice clean bokeh to, and it doesn't really matter what aperture you are at so I did have them send me this lens in the PL mount. Now the standard mount that I'm usually using is my Canon EF mount, and I'm using the Blackmagic Pocket 6K right now with an EF mount. So what's really cool about this is that when Iron Glass adapters, since they're making their own lens and they're re-engineering the outside and the mount, they're able to make um, adapters for them. So it's pretty hard to find an EF to PL adapter for most cameras because the flange distance is kind of strange on an EF mount camera because it's not a mirrorless camera originally it was designed to have a mirror in it so it's kind of a the lens sits pretty far from the sensor which makes it complicated to put the pl mount on there usually um, and it you know it causes troubles with like this lens for instance it's a small lens and they they engineered it themselves this back mount here so uh, it'll fit fine inside my pocket 6k but if i tried to put on like a a bigger cinema lens, the back element may be too long or too wide to fit inside the camera, so it does not work. But because they designed their own, they're actually able to design their own PL to EF adapter as well, which is really handy. So I can simply just put that on here, lock it up, and now this PL mount cinema lens can now work on an EF camera. So it's pretty nice for me, so now I can use it on basically any camera I want to. Um, if I want to put it on like an area mirror, for instance, what I, which I shoot on a lot for my commercial projects, I can just pop this right on to the PL mount on that, the more professional mount. Um, but if I want to use it on my Pocket 6K, now I have an EF mount to pop it on there too. This is sold separately on their website. It's like $200, I believe. Totally worth it for me because now I can just use it on any camera I want to, but still have that PL mount when I want to use it on a cinema camera. That PL mount is going to make it lock on there really well, really nice, and swap out very easily with other cinema lenses. So the construction of this lens is super nice. Uh, the, the black coating on it is really nice. They also have a kind of stormtrooper look, a kind of whitish silver color that you can get in it, get it in as well. And I believe when you order these, they um, they hand build every single one because they are rehousing old vintage lenses and they have to get their own stock in for those lenses and then rebuild them and they do it all from hand. So it does take a little bit to get this lens when you order it, but I feel like it's a really fun lens and really unique thing to have in your kit. Okay, so now I've talked a lot about what this lens is um, and why I like it, but let's just jump into some footage of it and let's talk about the actual characteristics of this lens and why you might want to have this lens in your kit. So before we see some more footage from this lens, let's talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. You don't need any prior web experience to be able to build a website using Squarespace. You can start with one of their award-winning templates or just kind of customize the website yourself. I've been using Squarespace for a better part of a decade because I've always needed a place to put my uh, photos and video online to help attract more clients and just to have an all-in-one place to present myself online. Obviously, you can modify the website from your computer and you can upload your videos there, but now they also have a mobile editing feature. You can download the Squarespace app and actually just edit the website from the app. You could upload a new video from there on the fly if there's something that you wanted to post or talk about while you're on the go. So if you're anything like me and you need to show off your videos online, well, you can just build that with Squarespace. You can click the link in the description to get 10% off and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So the first thing you'll notice is that swirly bokeh I talked about. See how the back the background has a little bit of this barrel distortion in it and it, it just gets funky, it gets weird. Like I've said on the channel, I kind of like weird um, and this lens is definitely that. Let's do a couple shots where we compare it to my Canon FD 55 millimeter. It's a similar focal range and it's a lens that I talk about all the time on the channel because I love it so much. It's got that really nice creamy bokeh. It opens all the way up to F1.2 um, and I just really like it. When you're comparing the two together, obviously the Helios cannot go to F1.2, so it can't get as weird of bokeh. It can't get quite as shallow as that the field, but there's something to be said about that. When you're shooting at f1.2 on the Canon 55 millimeter, it gets it's a, it's a it's basically an out of focus mess. It's very blurry. It's very soft. You lose a ton of contrast, which is okay. Sometimes you want that look, but generally speaking, if you're shooting like a commercial project, that kind of is hard to manage, and you have to really contain it when you're shooting. Where what I like about this uh, Helios lens, even though this is a very mass produced cheap Russian lens, it's really really nice. At f2, uh, everything is perfectly sharp. It's not sharp like a modern, like clinical lens, but it's not sh 
too soft. It doesn't seem as vintage, but like it's a it's a good thing for me, especially because I like the 58 and 55 focal length more on a full frame camera versus the Super 35 camera like my Pocket 6K because I just feel like the 55 is just a little bit too long of a lens. You're too far away from the subject for my taste, just my personal taste on a Super 35 millimeter um, sensor. But on a full frame sensor like the Sony a7S III, which most of these test shots were shot on the full frame, I really like the proximity of the camera to the subject and I really like that focal length. And so when you're shooting in a full frame, you know, you tend to have a more shallow depth of field because you can get closer to your subject. There's more light coming into the sensor. Um, this really helps that it's an F2, first off, because you can open that lens all the way up. You can get that really nice bokeh, but your subject is still in focus. At F2, everything is kind of crisp. So this lens costs $950 for the rehouse versions from iron glass adapters. Um, and that's just to get the base kit. Now you can add the different bokeh mods and the different, you can obviously get the PL adapter to go with it. So $950, I do believe that there are some sales going on sometimes and they'll be $850, which is a little bit cheaper. They also let you add more iris blades if you want to, so you can get 16 blades in it, which makes the bokeh look even more circular um, when stopping down that lens. So it may seem a little steep spending $950 on a rehouse lens like this, but when you start to use cinema lenses, you start to really fall in love with the ease of use of a proper cinema housing. So I've been using these old Canon FD vintage lenses for a long time now, but there's definitely some downsides of using a vintage lens. Like I've said before, having fungus or dust in the lens, which can be okay when you're shooting, but um, in other instances you may not want that kind of look um, and that's where I think that you know getting a lens rehoused from them they're already going to have the lens cleaned for you they're already going to have gears built into it you're going to have that proper uh, outer diameter on it and a proper PL mount on it so for $950 that's actually very inexpensive for a cinema lens now there are more there are some cinema lenses that are cheaper on the market that are newer, but you're gonna find that you're gonna light the optics out of this way better. Now they do offer more rehouse Soviet lenses on their website. Um, you know, there's a lot of these Russian lenses that were made back in the day and they kind of had similar coatings and kind of a similar characteristics. And so they can build you a set as well if you wanted to have a full set of cinema lenses. So they did not sponsor this video or pay me to say anything about this uh, lens and they're not gonna watch this video before it goes up. I just wanted to uh, test it out and review it for myself and tell you what I thought about it. And I'm just, I just have to say, I'm really excited to have it in my kit. Um, I just, I just love a good cinema housing. Just, just, just look at that. Oh, it is buttery smooth focus ring and the aperture ring fully manual. Um, the markings on it are really nice. I really like this black look. The white look would be really cool too if you had, you know, maybe like a white red Komodo or something like that, the stormtrooper look. But for me, I just don't like too much, you know, uh, interference with like reflections or anything like, anything like that. That's why I just basically keep everything black in my kit. Um, but, you know, it's fun to have different colors as well. You know, it's just one thing to be using an old vintage lens, but to be able to have a vintage lens and those characteristics, but have it in a brand new body, perfectly clean, that's just something that's really awesome. And I'm just really glad that Iron Glass Adapters offers this kind of service. You know, I've looked into rehousing my Canon FD lenses too, but it, I think it runs upward of $4,000 to rehouse one of these lenses. And then that just seems like we're getting a little bit uh, too expensive, but it's something that I might do in the future. Um, I think, you know, the thing about a lenses is that they don't really depreciate. Uh, a good lens will last for a really long time and will hold its value. And so investing in lenses really isn't that hard for me. Oh, I forgot to mention, it is a 95 millimeter outer diameter, but the inside thread here is 92 millimeters. So if you do want to put a filter in this and not use a matte box, you can put a 92 millimeter filter in here. And also like me, all my filters are 77 millimeter, but they do offer a step down ring to be able to put a 77 millimeter uh, filter in here as well. Because you can see how this, this uh, outer edge here is much, much wider than the actual lens. So you can actually put a much smaller filter in there. You just have to get the right adapter ring to put it on there. So I do want to thank Vintage Lens for Video and Iron Glass Adapters for sending me one of these lenses to try out. Um, it's uh, really nice and I'm really happy that I have it in my kit. If you have any more questions on it or if you want to see more footage from it, uh, let me know, comment below. Maybe I can add some more of that footage to a later video. Until next time, guys, I'm Spencer Zachariah. See ya.